Monkey Madness 1 barraging. So the requirements are Desert Treasure. You need to have partially completed Monkey Madness 1, 62 magic or 58 magic with potions, and 43 prayer. Here are some um, example setups um, from best to worst. Uh, magic attack bonus definitely matters here because the monkeys do have some magic defense. Uh, you also want a salve ami EI if you have that. And then gear that gives you magic damage percentage um, increase is extremely good as well. So here is an example inventory. Mainly uh, you want to have lots of prayer potions, a grigri, um, a teleport, runes for the chosen spell that you're going to be using, a stamina potion, anti-poison or antidote, and like one emergency food. Here are some stats for this method. These are based on being in max. So if you're not max, expect to get a little bit worse results than these. So here's an AFK scale that I recently made for my guides. So this method ranks as a five on the scale. Monkey Madness one barraging. So right now I'm at the Grand Tree. We are gonna head over to uh, Apatol. So head through here, up the ladder. Then you want to go over here and speak to Dario. Then Wadar. Then Lumbo. Then you should be on Apatol. At this point, if you brought your Grigri, you want to wear your Grigri and you want to head west. Once you see this ladder, you want to go down the ladder. If you're wearing your Grigri, you don't have to protect from melee. Um, but if you don't have it, then you do want to put protect from melee on. And then you want to start heading through the cave. Eventually you'll get to this spot where there are skeleton monkeys. So there are a few different spots where you can do this at. You can either do it at this spot like this guy is doing, or you can uh, continue running. Then there's a spot over here. You want to stand underneath these like little um, things uh, on the ceiling because that protects you from falling rocks. And then the spot that I usually use is right here, over here. So this is the spot I usually use. Uh, make sure you're standing underneath this thing. And then the initially you'll have only three monkeys or three skeletons on you. Um, these bones will spawn new monkeys. At this point, you just basically want to start uh, attacking them. Uh, you want to clump them up the best you can so that you're attacking as many of them as possible. When they die, uh, say for example, when there's more of them, say that there are two bones stacked on top of each other like that. You don't want to have that. As you see, the bones turned into monkeys, but only one for each square. So this one where there was stacked bones, only one monkey uh, was spawned. So if there's any stacked bones, you want to pick them up and drop them on their own square. And that way you'll have uh, more skeletons spawned at a time. That will maximize your XP here. Monkey Madness 2 Barraging. So the requirements are Desert Treasure. You need to have partially completed Monkey Madness 2. You need at least 62 magic or 58 magic with potions and 43 prayer. Along with any requirements that are needed to start um, Monkey Madness 2. Here are some gear setups. So from best to worst. Uh, for these monkeys that you're going to be barraging, they don't really have any magic defense. So magic attack bonus really isn't too important here. Um, prayer bonus is actually probably something that you want to prioritize over magic attack bonus. Although magic damage bonus is important. So if you have ancestral, occult, um, tormented bracelet, all that stuff is important. But uh, just purely magic attack, uh, prayer is probably better. For your inventory, you're going to want prayer potions, a teleport to teleport away, um, light source, runes for the chosen spell that you're going to use. Stamina Potion and an Imbued Heart is... It can give you access to higher level spells, which could increase your XP per hour. The monkeys do drop Prayer Potions, so it is possible to bring like one Prayer Potion and then just completely restock. 
off of the monkeys. Here's a table for the monkeys. Um, so these XP rates are based on max gear. So if you don't have max gear, uh, then expect slightly less than what's on this table. Also, if you don't have alts, it is probably better to use the smoke spells rather than the ice spells. Only use ice spells if you have alts um, stacking the monkeys for you. And the AFK rating. So this scale I made recently for my guides and for this method, I give it a rating of three if you have no alts and a rating of 10 if you have two alts dancing for you. This is how I get to the Monkey Madness 2 bursting area. So first I start at the Duel Arena and I use the glider to go to Apatal and then I, from there I go down the trap door and go through the dungeon. The path that you take through the obstacles in the dungeon is randomized for each person. So you just have to try each of the paths that are possible to you um, until you find the right one. If you go the wrong way, it will give you a message saying that perhaps this is the wrong way. If you haven't completed Monkey Madness 2, you can't use the glider, I believe. So in that case, you will have to go through Dario like you did while doing Monkey Madness 1. Monkey Madness 2 bursting or barraging. So you enter this hole once you've reached this point. Make sure your protect from melee is on and you want to head east. So just follow this, uh, this tunnel and eventually you will come to a big opening spot. Once you get to this spot, you want to head over to this little area right here um, with this little diagonal. You got these three squares right here. So this is where you're going to burst. But what you want to do is you want to stand right here and then you want to click this spot and this spot and get them stacked up a bit. You only have to do that a couple times though and then you want to turn on auto retaliate and then you want to move a square every time you attack. So I attacked, move to this square, um, attack, Move that square attack and notice I'm attacking with auto retaliate. I'm not actually clicking to attack. I'm using my auto retaliate. And then you just want to do that between every single attack. That is how you burst in the Monkey Madness 2 caves. So how you set up your alt accounts or your friends if they're going to help you burst or chin here at the Monkey Madness 2 caves. So you have your two friends here or alts. Um, there is my the other account and then we got one there and then the one I'm on right now and then the one that's actually bursting so three accounts total so you take one and you follow the other uh, then the other one that is being followed what you do is you so what you want to do is you want to click here here and then follow and if you do if you have the timing correctly you'll start doing a circle like this and what this will do is it will uh, basically allow monkeys to stack up on each other instead of only one monkey occupying a square um, every time you run through that square it allows another one to move to that square so that they can stack up Bloodveld Barraging. So the requirements are Desert Treasure, one or two alt accounts, 50 Slayer, 62 Magic, or 58 Magic with Potions. Um, that is for Smoke Burst, even higher Magic if you want to use higher spells. 43 Prayer, runes for your spell. And then you do want to have Darts and or a Bulwark for the aggro. Here are some gear setups from best to worst. These are not necessarily grouped together as you need the set. It's more uh, each slot is downgraded as you go to the right. For Bloodvelds, they don't really have any magic defense, so magic attack bonus really isn't that important. What you want to prioritize is prayer bonus and magic damage bonus. For your inventory, you want to have around two to eight prayer potions depending on your prayer level, how long your task is, that sort of stuff. Uh, you want to have a teleport to your Slayer Master when you finish the task. Uh, you want to have runes for your chosen spell. You want to have a Soul Bearer, um, Ash Sanctifier, those aren't required but it is good to have those um, an explorer's ring is also helpful you can elk stuff with it while still being on the ancient spellbook uh, darts and a bulwark to get the aggro here's a table of uh, some details about bursting or barraging blood so you can see the cast per hour the xp per hour 
and a bunch of other details that you guys can pause the video and go over. Here is the AFK scale that I'm going to use to reference how AFK these are. So the score I give them, um, if you have one alt, the AFK rating I would give is three. If you have two alts dancing, then I would give it an eight. So to get to the blood velds, you're going to want to go to the catacombs of Karen. So there's a couple ways to get there uh, that are really quick. The first, you can cast the Karen castle teleport spell if you have that unlocked, or you can also cast or use your Xerix amulet and teleport to the heart. Um, both of those do have requirements. You can also go to world 330 and use someone's house to cast the Karen teleport spell. Um, so once you cast that, you're going to end up in the middle of Zaya, and then you're going to want to investigate the statue right here. Once you investigate the statue, you're going to end up in the catacombs and you're going to run north to this room right here. This is the room that you're going to cast. Or this is the room that you're going to barrage the Bloodvelds. How to set up the Bloodveld barraging on your alt account if you only have one alt account. Uh, this is what you're going to have to do. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to run between these. Let me mark them real quick. So this tile, this tile, this tile and this tile. So what you're going to do is you're just going to run around on these squares and that is going to stack them. So if you have two accounts, obviously it is much easier to just have them dance. You don't have to sit here and run around like this. Um, but yeah, this is what you do if you have one account and then your main account will just barrage them as you run around. And then doing this uh, allows your main to stay in that same spot as well if you're not an Iron Man. Um, and you can attack them and aggro them on this account that runs around. So for Blood Veld Barraging, you're going to need two other accounts, so either two friends or two alt accounts. Um, and they're going to just dance and then that allows you to AFK and barrage. Um, so how you set these two accounts up is you're going to have one of them follow the other account. You're gonna do, you're gonna stand here, and then you're gonna walk here so that your accounts are exactly on these tiles. And then from this point, what you're gonna do is you're gonna click here, here, and then follow. So just like, just like this. And once you do that, they should be walking in this pattern. So when luring these, when once you have them all aggroed on, um, what you want to do is you want to have these squares marked that I have marked here. And what you want to do is you want to walk here, here, and then either that square or this square right here. That will help ensure that they are um, angled and lined up correctly where this lure will actually work and then they'll stack up. Um, it doesn't always work, but it works most of the time as long as you um, do that pattern. Dust Devil Barraging. So the requirements for this are Desert Treasure, 65 Slayer, 62 Magic, 58 with Magic Potions. Um, that is for Smoke Burst, so you're going to need higher magic for higher spells. 43 Prayer, Face Mask or Slayer Helmet, Rinse for your spell, Darts and or Bulwark for the aggro. So here are some setups from best to worst. These aren't sets, um, just each for each picture you just downgrade each slot by one. And I did Photoshop uh, the face mask on, you definitely need a face mask or a Slayer helmet that has a face mask built in. For your inventory, you're going to want two to eight prayer potions, depending on how long the task is and your prayer level. 
Uh, teleport to a Slayer Master once it's done. Runes for your chosen spell. Bone Crusher, Darts, Bulwark, and an Explorer's Ring are helpful. Here's a table of a bunch of information um, for bursting and barraging dust devils, so you guys can go ahead and pause it if you want to look at that. Then here is the AF skill uh, that I'm going to be using. So the AFK rating I give is if you have an alt account of 5 and no alts a 6. Bursting dust devils. So to get to dust devils you want to teleport to Zaya. Um, you can use a Karen teleport. Uh, I use my Xerix Talisman to teleport to the heart if you have that available. There are a few different teleports, but you want to get to this center area in Zaya. Um, so once you are here, you want to investigate the statue. Go down here. This is the catacombs of Karend. So from here to get to Dust Devils, you want to head east. And then this is the bursting spot. Bursting Dust Devils, what you do is you bring a fast weapon such as darts. You equip that and then you're just going to attack everything in the room. You can also bring the Din's Bulwark, which has a special attack that attacks everything like in a huge area. Um, so that's really good for getting aggro as well. Uh, it does take special attacks, so you can only do it sometimes. Um, but once you have them all aggroed, you run over to this corner, you run between these two squares, and that will stack them up. Once they're stacked up, you want to switch over to your Burst or Barrage, and then just attack them. And then once they're all dead, they're going to respawn, and you just repeat that process over and over. How to Burst or Barrage dust devils with an alt. Typically I'll stand on this square right here and then with the alt account you just attack all of the dust devils in the this area right here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So once you've attacked them all then you're just gonna run back over here where your main account is at and then you're just gonna run between these two squares as you can see me doing on screen. That is gonna stack up the dust devils when you run between the squares like that. Once they're stacked up, you just attack them on your main account. Uh, you're going to want to use Protect from Melee on both accounts. And that is all there is to it. Once they start respawning, you just want to attack them on your alt account and lure them back over to this spot and just continue doing that. Necreal Barraging. The requirements for this are Desert Treasure, 80 Slayer, 62 Magic, 58 with Magic Potions. That is for Smoke Burst. You can, it is good to use higher spells, but that will require higher magic. Uh, 43 Prayer, Runes for your spell. Uh, recommended to have darts and or a bulwark for the aggro. Best to worst gear setups. Uh, here are some. And these actually aren't necessarily setups uh, or sets. Uh, just basically each picture as you go to the right is a downgrade for each slot. Necro really don't have too much magic defense bonus, so you really what you want to focus on is magic damage bonus and prayer bonus. Magic attack bonus really isn't that helpful. For your inventory, you're going to want 2 to 8 prayer potions, a Slayer Master teleport, some sort of teleport to get to your Slayer Master after the task is done, runes for your chosen spell, uh, the Ash Sanctifier is helpful, darts, Bulwark and the Explorer's Ring are also helpful. Here is a table of information for Bursting and Barraging Necril. Uh, you can go ahead and pause it if you want to look over that. And then here is the AFK scale that I'm going to use to rate these. Uh, so the AFK rating that I give 
The AFK rating, if you have an alt, is a 5, and if you do not have an alt, it is a 7. The reason why it's more AFK when you don't have an alt is because you're going to be barraging them basically until the whole stack is dead. While if you have an alt, uh, as soon as one dies and it spawns a few seconds later, you got to go ahead and attack it on the alt. So you're going to be attacking them a lot more often than if you are waiting for the whole stack to die before you re-aggro them. Bursting Necreal. So to burst Necreal, you want to head over to the Catacombs of Krend. I'm going to go ahead and use my Xerix Talisman to teleport to the heart. Um, if you don't have this teleport unlocked, then you can use a Krend teleport. Um, you want to investigate the statue. Then from here, you want to head north. Then start running east, and you should get to the Necreal. So there are two rooms. There's this room here, and then there's a room over here where there's already a guy bursting. So what you want to do once you get to one of these areas or one of these rooms, you want to use your darts to attack them. Um, make sure you're using Protect from Melee. Once you've aggroed all of them, you want to stack them. So to do that, you want to go like this. Basically find a spot and just run between two squares like this. And that will allow them to stack on one spot. And from there, you can burst them. So how you barrage or burst Necreal with an alt is you attack them all on the alt account and then you walk over to where your main account is standing and you run between two squares to stack them up and whenever they respawn you go and attack them again and run back to where your main is standing. And you run back and forth like this. Uh, usually it's three, three squares. You have your run on and you run between two squares. So once the Necrils start respawning, you want to attack them on your alt account and drag them back over. Once again, stack them back up and just continue barraging on your main account. Also on your alt account, you want to pick up any uh, drops that drop that you want to pick up. Um, just leave your main account barraging. So everything else you do on your alt account. Abyssal Demon Barraging. The requirements for this are Desert Treasure, 85 Slayer, 62 Magic or higher, or 58 Magic with Potions, 62 is for Smoke Burst, 43 Prayer, Runes for your spell, and it's recommended to have darts and or a bulwark for the aggro. So here, here are some gear setups. So going from left to right is best to worst, and as you go to each picture, it's one downgrade for each... Uh, slot for the inventory you're going to want two to eight prayer potions depending on how long the task is your prayer level uh you're going to want a slayer master teleport so you can teleport to your slayer master once the task is done you need your runes for the spell that you're going to use uh ash sanctifier soul bearer darts those are all very helpful you want to bring those long distance fast weapons such as a trident or a crossbow uh, those are also very helpful for Abbey Demons. Also, a Bulwark and an Explorer's Ring are also helpful. Here is a table of details for Bursting and Barraging Abyssal Demons. Here is an AFK scale that I'm going to use to rate how AFK it is. So for Abyssal Demons, 
I give it a rating of 2 for both whether you have an alt or whether you don't have an alt. Bursting Abyssal Demons. So to burst Abyssal Demons, you want to go to the Catacombs of Krend. So I'm going to use my Xerx Talisman to teleport to the heart of Krend. Uh, you can also get here really quickly with the Krend teleport in the normal spellbook. Um, also, and you can use your Memoirs to teleport to any of the other locations around here and make your way to the center of Zaya right here. You want to investigate the statue. And then from here, you want to run north. And then you can either go through the uh, metal dragons if you're willing to risk that, um, or you can go a bit longer path by uh, going through the metal dragons, you would have ran north over there, um, but that's a bit dangerous and you can die if you don't bring an anti-dragon shield. So you can also just go this way, um, head over here by the raider demons, and then you are at the abbey demons. So for bursting or barraging abyssal demons, you kind of want to lure the demons from both rooms into this little hallway right here. So I'm going to go ahead and attack this room first. I brought a crossbow because it has a very long range along with it being a three tick weapon on rapid. We're going to go ahead and attack these, put protect from Leon. Notice I have my uh, attack option on right click. That helps me uh, stack them up in the hall. Now that I've attacked all these, I'm going to stack them up here in the hall. I'm going to put on my magic gear. I'm going to do one uh, barrage just to freeze them. So they've been frozen. I'm going to go ahead and attack these now. The ones in the other room. So these are going to be de aggroed for me now, but they're frozen, so they're not going to get away yet. I'm going to come over here with these new ones I just attacked and I'm going to start attacking them or barraging. I'm using smoke barrage uh, now because uh, this allows them to continually attack me. Uh, if they're frozen and I get teleported, then they may not be able to attack me and they may be out of uh, in the wrong spot um, and not stacked correctly. So you want to use smoke barrage most of the time, uh, just ice when you need to freeze them to get the ones from the other room. And then along with this, this is basically what I'm doing right now. This is basically all you have to do. Uh, just a few tips though, a soul bearer to teleport abyssal heads back to the bank, um, an ash sanctifier to automatically bury any ashes that they drop, and then a din's bulwark to re-aggro them like this. You can aggro an entire room with the din's bulwark. Smoke Devil Barraging. The requirements are Desert Treasure, 93 Slayer, 
62 magic or 58 magic with potions for smoke burst, uh, 43 prayer. You can use higher spells, but they will require higher magic. Um, the runes for your spell and a cannon. And they also require a face mask or a slayer helmet. Here are some gear setups for smoke devils. So going from left to right is best to worst. Uh, these aren't necessarily sets of gear. It's just uh, each picture to the right is a downgrade for each slot. The inventory for smoke devils, you're going to want two to eight prayer potions, depending on the task length and your prayer level. Uh, you're going to want a slayer master teleport to teleport to your slayer master once the task is done. Uh, you're going to want runes for your chosen spell. You're going to want a cannon, cannonballs. You're going to want an explorer's ring and an imbued heart. Here is a table of information for smoke devils. So you can go ahead and pause it and check that out. Here is an AFK scale that I'm going to use to rate how AFK it is. So smoke devils, I give a rating of two on the AFK scale. Bursting smoke devils. So there's a couple ways you can get over to the smoke devils. Uh, the first way is you can use a fairy ring. That's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to go to my fairy ring in my house, configure, and then the code is BKP. I'm going to go ahead and use that code. That will teleport me just south of the cave. Another easy way is to just use a dueling ring and to teleport to Castle Wars. And there you want to make your way over to this dungeon over here, smoky dungeon. Then inside, uh, there's a cannon spot over here. You want to set up your cannon. How to do smoke devil barraging. So if you're using rune light, it will show you where to put your cannon. But if not, just uh, look at where this square is at. This is where you place your cannon. So go ahead and set up a cannon right here. Your cannon is going to be what aggroes all of them. So you, it's really important to use one. Once you have your cannon set up, what you're going to do is you're just going to start firing it. You're going to use protect from range. And then you're going to use this little skeleton pile right here to uh, kind of lure them over here after they've been aggroed by your cannon. So once you get some over here, then you're going to start barraging. You want to make sure to keep your cannon uh, loaded up. And you're going to attack the one right here because that will attack the mo that will attack the uh, the most amount of them. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to stand either right here, right there, or right here. So if you stand right here, that's going to lure the ones over there. If you stand right here, it's going to lure all the ones from down there. And if you stand right there, it's going to lure all the ones from up here. You basically just want to keep swapping between the spots. You want to try and spend as much time as possible actually bursting. You don't want to just be standing around uh, if you want to maximize your XP. 